So you want to start reading comics? That's pretty easy. You just start at Action Comics number one from 1938 and read everything that's ever come out until now. It's just that simple. Hey everybody, Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard here. So I've been asked many times on Twitter and real life and comments and videos, I want to get into comics, where do I start? And so I thought I'd throw together a little video with some tips and tricks on how to start your own comic collection and how I got started and got into way too many issues. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully in just a little helpful video for you to start your own collection, so let's get into it. So I actually haven't been collecting comics as long as most people think, although it has been... Shit, it's been like 13 years. Wow, I am old. So it's been a while, I guess. Uh, but I did not start since childhood until now. Um, so growing up, I was super into superheroes, as most kids are. Uh, my parents showed me the 1960s Adam West Batman show, and I loved it and got into that. Um, and I got into, you know, the 90s cartoons, things like that. But comics themselves wasn't a huge part of growing up for me. Um, I did have a few, but going to a comic shop was a, was a rarity for me. Um, I think it's because my parents feel very uncomfortable in comic shops, uh, and I still think so today, but uh, not sure why. My entire collection growing up in a pile is going to be a smaller pile than the pile I have of comics I need to read right now, so that's where I started. So fast forward to college, um, roughly about 2003-2004, uh, um, I was hanging out with my girlfriend at the time at her place, and uh, we were just kind of hanging out and talking and whatever. And I saw her comic collection that she actually kept in a binder. Um, and we're kind of going through it, talking about heroes and things like that. And, um, you know, kind of clicked that um, at where she lived at the time, and I lived pretty close, that the world's biggest comic shop, Mile High Comics, was really close, and we should go check it out. Which, yes, the, uh, that's a real thing. The world's biggest comic shop is Mile High Comics. Um, I'm not terribly close to it anymore, but uh, yeah, I grew up right near it the whole time. And maybe I should do a vlog and actually like go down there and show you guys it, because it's pretty impressive, and it's actually bigger now than when I was growing up. But anyways, besides the point, so we decided to head down to Mile High Comics and got into picking up some comics. Found a smaller shop that was you know easier, more suitable to us on a regular basis and just started getting into comics and became a thing. Um, so I initially started with just uh, older issues. Uh, I got a lot of the Gambit solo series from the 90s, some X-Men. I found on eBay uh, someone was selling a um, bulk collection of Spawn 1 through 63 plus some other uh, Spawn miniseries. Uh, so I got that, that got me into Spawn and just kinda kept uh, Going with the back issues, I wasn't getting anything brand new coming out at the time. Uh, until House of M, which is my first event comic. You know, big crossover, uh, going over multiple books, things like that. Um, for me, it was House of M. And so um, I kind of got that and got that as it was coming out. And once that event ended, it started a whole bunch of number ones. Specifically, X Factor number one, which... Uh, I've stated before is my favorite long-running series of all time um, and then from there that got me into other places and other people and other comics and just started branching out and then you know I talked to my comic shop guy and he tells me about new series coming out um, I learned about stuff on the internet about new series coming out um, things like that and I often get asked you know how do I how do I know what new series I want to get? And it's usually either an ad in a comic 
or um, a suggestion from friends or my comic guy or honestly sometimes it just has a cool cover I'll just check it out um, and that's worked out so far but yeah um, that's kind of how I get my collection what I'm doing now and I have a regular shop that I go to once a month uh, pick up my hold slot and um, you know if I see anything new on the shelf that looks pretty cool I'll add that as well and that's kind of where I'm at now and that's how I got to a, a collection that's over 3,000 comics and that I don't even know what to do and I honestly don't even want to move houses anymore because I don't even want to move that collection but yeah that's a thing but how do you the watcher get into comics because that's how I did it it's not the same for everybody and when people ask me this um, you know I have a few little tips but it's kind of different for everybody uh, but I will give you some uh, direct tips that I hope you will find helpful. Uh, the first one being, don't be afraid. And that's for a lot of things. Um, I feel like a lot of people are intimidated by comics because of, as I mentioned in my intro, there's 80 plus years of history of comic books. And like, where do, we, where do I even start? I don't even know. Don't let that intimidate you. It's very easy to catch back up on stuff and to find out information, so don't let that intimidate you. The other big fear I think people have, and I think this is what bugged my parents in comic shops, is the fear of the angry comic nerd. C can I use your bathroom? No, you may not. The bathroom is for paying customers only. If you purchase an item, you may use the bathroom. Uh, okay, um, how about that? <laughs> That is a rare photo of Sean Connery signed by Roger Moore. It is worth $150. What can I get for 75 cents? Uh, you may purchase this charming Hamburglar adventure. A child has already solved the jumble using crayons. The answer is fries. Yeah, those people probably exist, but those aren't comic shop owners, at least in my experience. Comic shop owners want you to enjoy comics because they want you to keep spending money. Like, they, it's a win-win. If you enjoy comics, they make money. So they're going to help you out. So don't be afraid of the comic shop owners thinking if you don't have like this vast array of knowledge of comics. They want to help you out. Get, you know, ask them. They'll give you tips. They'll find you books. All sorts of stuff. They're a great source of information. Uh, so don't let that intimidate you. Uh, and don't let your lack of knowledge you know, f scare you from comics either. It's, uh, it's a learning process. Like any hobby... You're not going to know a lot at first, and you eventually have to build that knowledge. Although I will right now give you some really quick tips on some uh, just, uh, uh, you know, wording and things like that. And uh, that's the difference between a single issue, a trade paperback, and a graphic novel. So let's just do that real quick. So a single issue is uh, a short comic, uh, usually 20 some odd pages, that comes out once a month and it's part of a overarching story. This is what you normally see. Um, you know, it got the number that it came out and these come out monthly. This is just a monthly comic or a single issue. So a trade paperback or trade hardback is a collection of, an, of monthly series. Um, so this one takes place over Iron Man. Uh, Invincible Iron Man 20 to 24, uh, so it collects all the issues in one easy collection. Uh, the difference between a trade paperback and a trade hardback is honestly just the cover, if it's a hard cover or soft cover. That's pretty much it. But these um, are also part of a larger overarching story, but it's a much larger part. Uh, a lot of people tend to want to collect these nowadays because it's easier than getting it every month. You can wait you know get two or three of these a year and get a whole series and catch up so uh, that's an option as well finally a graphic novel is an entire encapsulated series in one collection uh, this is wanted which is very awesome by the way um, and so yeah a lot of people think graphic novel is just nerds trying to make comics sound more uh, you know more robust it's a graphic novel it's not a comic no, no, comics are comics. Graphic novels are actually kind of like novels, just, you know, with uh, pictures. Uh, so, yeah, these are always just a full, it's the entire story in one collection. That's a graphic novel. So there, there's some quick tips for you. But uh, basically, yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Just go for it. Um, that's what I did. I just got into comics. And you just, sometimes, like most hobbies, just got to dive right in.
My next tip is find what you like. Comics are more than superheroes. There's horror comics, romance comics, comedy comics. It runs the gambit of genre. So figure out what you want to read. Um, on the superhero side, because let's face it, it is dominated by superheroes, find out what heroes you like, even if it is from a movie or uh, a TV show or whatever. But if you like a hero, you know, kind of collect that. I started with Gambit because I liked him as a character, so I started getting the Gambit individual issues, and I knew he's part of X-Men, so kind of like that. Uh, when someone asks me what they should collect first, generally my first question is, what heroes do you like? Uh, and that's where you want to start. Let, go with the heroes you like, and there's enough crossover that you'll find some new characters you enjoy, and it just gets, you know, becomes this giant rabbit hole of knowing all sorts of things. But, you know, really take a moment and think about what hero you want to get into. Back to the first tip, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, like something weird. I got a friend that's super into the Max from the 90s. And she always feels weird bringing that up. It's like, no, like what you're going to like, man. Don't be afraid if you like a weird hero. There's going to be a comic for it, I promise. And also, uh, don't be afraid to be... Um, to like something from a movie and get into comics. I think that's a lot of people's fear is that they're going to be judged because, you know, they got into Iron Man from the from the movie and not the comics first. N screw it. Get into it. I got into Gambit because of the cartoon. I got into Batman because of Adam West. You know, whatever gets you in interested, just go with it. Don't be afraid of it. But yeah, figure out what you like and collect that. Next tip is going to be do some research. There is all sorts of of information out these days. Uh, Wikipedia is a great source. Uh, Marvel and DC both have their own individual wikis that will go through even individual issues and give you synopsis. So you can do some research and find out, um, you know, like I say, what hero do you like? You can then go online, find a blog that talked about, you know, the best Doctor Strange stories or the best Hulk stories. And you can then go collect those or find the trade paperback, things like that. Uh, so use, use the internet as a great resource. It, it is fantastic. Um, as well as it works is if, um, I know a lot of people tend to be afraid if not starting at number one. Like I have to start at number one or I won't get the whole story. No, no, don't worry about that. Uh, you can uh, read online. It's not necessarily the full story, but you can get the general synopsis reading online uh, where that comic is now to get you caught up so you can just collect what you like. Um, oh, a few years back when DC rebooted and started their new 52, I only got a few issues. Um, but around that time, that's when Arrow started, and I got very interested in Green Arrow as a character, and so I wanted to get Green Arrow comics. And I just got whatever new Green Arrow there was and just took off from there. Me being a collector with a huge collector mentality, I did go back and buy the back issues, but I did, you know, I just jumped right into it. So, um, yeah, do you do some research, uh, find out about your hero, find out about their backstory. Uh, if you get into a comic that's not necessarily number one, you can read the old stuff and get caught up online. So use that online resource and do some research. Now this tip is a little bit more for once you start getting into more comics. So you started collecting your favorite hero, uh, but you're starting to feel a little stifled, or maybe you want to get even more comics, but he's only in one comic a month, he or she. Don't be afraid to try something new. Dive into something. Um, I have more than once got a comic just based on the cover, and just like, hey, that looks kind of cool, check it out. Um, so yeah, try something new, try something different, get tips from your comic, uh, your comic shop owner of what, uh, what he likes, what's different. Don't be afraid to go outside Marvel and DC and get an Image comic or a Valiant or Boom Studios or, um, you know, I just started getting this uh, comic called Robin Hood that's this future, uh, Robin Hood, uh, that's a female. I don't even know, I've never even heard of the publisher before, but I was like, that looks kind of interesting, I'm gonna check that out. So don't be afraid to try something new. Get into something different. Go outside the superhero genre. Get a horror comic. You know, there's all sorts of things. So don't be afraid to try something new. Now this is a huge tip. So you've 
started getting into comics now. You got a good collection going. Um, you got, you know, a good, sh you know, long box of comics. Uh, you're going to a store regularly. You know what you like. Get a hold slot. Every comic shop I have been to um, offers this as an option, and it is a great idea. So a hold slot is basically uh, you tell your shop, I mean each one handles a little differently, but you tell your shop which comics you're collecting on monthly regularly, and they'll put them aside for you. And a lot of shops will even give you a discount for doing that because they know you're going to be a regular customer at that point. And it just it's very helpful if you're getting monthly comics regularly. Um, the, they just hold them aside for you and you, you can go in and pick them up, check out what's on, on the racks, and it's incredibly helpful. And like I said, you might even get a discount for doing it. So get a hold slot. It is great. There is a caveat to that is don't be a dick about it and clean out your hold slot you know at least once a month or make sure you come in at least once a month to pick up some comics you don't want them to be just holding this giant stack for you um, you know that's those are comics they could be selling that they're just holding aside so make sure you clean it out every so often but get a hold slot so hopefully this makes collecting comics a little less intimidating for you and makes you think uh, about getting into comics yourself um, you know it just like your heroes and just dive into it man it's a great hobby it can get a little expensive when you get as crazy as me and you have you know a stack this tall of what you need to read but it is a great hobby it's great for kids learning to read and going through it it's great for adults to be able to get a little deeper storylines it's just it's for everybody it's for males it's for females white black hispanic whoever Everyone can be into comics, and it's a great hobby. So I definitely encourage you, if you are into the comic movies, check out some comics, man. They're a lot of fun. So I'm Sexy Matt the Pharaoh Wizard. Until next time, clean out your hold slot, man. Clean it out. So damn nerdy. I'll take you to the comic shop. I'll show you all the pills I drop. But when I grab my pull, it's